I got two words for you, stuffed artichokes. If you know, you know, this is an Italian favorite and I'm showing you my family's recipe. They are a little intimidating when you look at them. They seem like a lot of work, but they're actually surprisingly easy. When it comes to choosing your artichokes, you wanna choose ones that are pretty green. A few brown spots are okay, but you don't want one that's covered in brown spots. And you want one that's sort of heavy for its size, then you know it's not dried out. You don't wanna see really wrinkly leaves. This is a good fresh artichoke. It's okay if they've opened up a little bit, but when they're nice and tight, that is a really fresh artichoke. I like ones that have kind of started to open up because it's gonna make it easier for stuffing. Probably the most intimidating part, but it's not hard, is prepping the artichoke. Whether you're stuffing it or not, you have to do this step. First thing you're gonna do is trim off the top third or fourth of the artichoke, and then you'll go back around and trim off the points of each individual leaf. Nobody wants to bite on a thorn. To cut off the top, it's safest and probably easiest to use a serrated knife, and then you're just gonna saw it off. Once you've trimmed off the top, you'll go around to each leaf and cut off about a quarter to a half inch. This will give the tops of the leaves all a flat edge and get rid of that prickly point, plus it makes it easier to fill them. Artichokes are in the same family as asparagus, so just like asparagus at the stems, they can be quite woodsy. So there are lots of parts of the artichoke that are inedible, but the edible parts are like a delicacy. All right, once that's trimmed, you're gonna go to the stem, peel off any of those little baby leaves, and then we're gonna trim off the bottom and give it a flat edge so that it stands upright. The prep part is almost done. Next, you're gonna turn it upside down and bang it really hard. You want this to open up and just loosen up in the center. This is really tight because we've got a nice fresh artichoke and we just want to kind of loosen that up. Mama, you just want to bang it enough till you can feel the leaves kind of loosen up and open up easily. And the final thing you want to do is to rub a cut lemon over all of the cut edges. They're going to turn brown, just like a lot of our favorite fruits and vegetables. After they've been cut and the air hits them, they're going to turn brown, so you want to prevent that with a little lemon. A lot of families have their own way to do their stuffed artichokes. This is just our way. Although you can leave me a comment on your favorite way to stuff the artichokes, but don't tell me what I'm doing wrong. All right, the prep is done, and now it's time for the filling. The filling is like a soft, garlicky, cheesy breadcrumb mixture. It starts with, I'm using plain breadcrumbs. My aunt and grandmother sometimes use the Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. That's just a good shortcut, but I like the consistency of the plain better. To that, I'm adding a whole cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You want like the good fresh stuff, not necessarily the stuff that comes in the big green can. And then lots of garlic. I'm starting with six cloves, six large cloves of garlic. If they're smaller, you can go up. If you don't love garlic, you can do less, but garlic's what makes it. And then this, is not my grandmother's recipe. This is the way I kind of make it a little my own. I'm adding about a half a teaspoon, not much, just a little bit of lemon zest. Now you can go ahead and get your lemon zest before you cut them to rub on your artichokes. That's probably a smart idea, but you just need such a small amount. And then finely chopped parsley. You want this really super fine because it's such a small amount in each artichoke leaf. And then we're just gonna season with some salt and pepper. That's it, very simple ingredients. All right, that's the mixture. Now we are going to fill every little crevice of these artichokes. I would say four artichokes will feed about eight people. There's no real science to this and it might get a little messy. That's why I like to put them inside a casserole dish to catch your leftover spillage. But then I just grab a small little handful and just sprinkle it into the leaves. And I like a lot of filling in my artichokes. So I stuff these until they're stuffed. And as you're filling, you'll just use your fingers to kind of open up each layer of leaves and then just kind of spread it out and let the mixture fall to the bottom and add more. Making stuffed artichokes is a lot like eating crawfish. It's, you know, a bit of work for just a small amount of meat, but you just gotta savor it, make it an experience. That's why these are served at special occasions. Otherwise they wouldn't be special. Some people like to cook the artichoke halfway or all the way before filling it and then cook it some more after that. My grandmother just always stuffed it and then cooked it all at once. You just keep filling and letting it fall to the bottom until they are all stuffed, until pretty much all this breadcrumb mixture is used up. 
That's it, my friends. Now we go to the stove to cook them up. We're gonna cook these right on the stove top. You wanna find a large pot that's big enough to nestle all these artichokes together, or you can do two smaller pots if you don't have one big enough. And you wanna have a pan that has a cover to it because these are gonna cook covered. To that, I'm gonna add in about two and a half cups of water till it comes up about an inch high. And then I like to season the water just a little bit more with a couple teaspoons of salt. And then we just place our artichokes, stand them up. And that's it. Now we drizzle with olive oil. We really want the cheese and breadcrumb mixture to be nice and moist. Plus the olive oil when it mixes with that garlic is going to transfer so much flavor. So you're just gonna kinda drizzle it evenly over the top and get it in the leaves. We're just gonna crank this up and bring it up to a simmer, then cook them covered for about an hour until the leaves, when they're pulled, release really easily. Just make sure the water doesn't evaporate out from the bottom. If you need to add more during the cooking process, that's totally fine. We're gonna be making a lot of people happy in just a few minutes. These look so good. I'm gonna finish it off with just a little fresh sprinkle of parsley, just to brighten them up a bit. I like serving with a little lemon, just for a little brightness. The best way to tell when these artichokes were ready is you saw how easily they pulled from the center. First of all, it smells so good. You smell the herby, garlicky, cheesy goodness. The texture is really reminiscent of like a dressing or a stuffing. You've just got those, you know, moist, flavorful breadcrumbs. The top of the leaf is too fibrous. That's not what you want. Down here, the bottom of the leaf is where the meat is. That was attached to the artichoke heart and that is just like super tender artichoke goodness. Put the leaf in your mouth and then you're gonna kind of scrape it along your top teeth. Sounds terrible, but it's delicious. Ready? And that's how it's done. And you just keep going until you get to the center. As you get to the center, people are gonna start flocking in because you're gonna be fighting over that heart. You'll also notice that the closer you get to the center, the more meat there is on the leaves. See right there? That's some good meat right there. Anyway, you keep going, but there's a part in here that you cannot eat. I'm pretty sure it's called the choke, because that's exactly what you will do. As you get to the center, these leaves are pretty much inedible, so you just kind of pull them off, and then you're gonna reveal this little fuzzy area that you gotta scrape out. That's the hairy choke. It's the name of my cookbook. <laughs> Anyway, you just kind of scrape out that little hairy bit. Yes, it does not look like what comes in a can. This is the real deal. I like to save this and dip it in a little lemony mayo, but a little squeeze of lemon is also really good. Just break it apart. It's very tender yet meaty is really just the best way to describe it. There's not much not to like about it. It's not like it has this strong, overwhelming flavor. Don't be scared of the artichoke. If you're looking to be adventurous in the kitchen and try something new, this is the recipe for you. It's not hard and it tastes absolutely amazing. Or maybe you've tasted your friend's grandmother's recipe and you wanted to know how to make them. This is it. I hope you'll give this recipe a try. And when you do, don't forget to tag me. Artichokes are good. All right, that's a wrap. Now y'all come over and taste this. Are you scared? Yeah, I'm terrified. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. That's you really, really good. Like you gotta try this at home. Get cooking. Ha <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap.